Let's look at the basic ideas of differentiation. And differentiation has been with us for a few hundred years now. And in the core one module that uh, you're studying, you only have to have quite a simple understanding of what's going on. You don't have to know the full theory behind this, uh, which we would be looking at later on in uh, core three uh, and core four work. So at this stage, we are coming at this idea from quite a numerical uh, concept. Now, differentiation is a topic that was put together when people were looking at the gradient, not of a straight line, but of a curve. So we're looking at the gradients of curves. What do we mean by the gradient of a curve? Well, if I draw a curved line and say, how steep is it? Then, of course, imagine you're some chap trying to walk up this hill. When you're at the bottom of the hill, you don't think it's too steep. By the time you got up here, you'd be thinking, crikey, that, that's very steep. So the gradient of a curve changes. Now, that's really crucial, it's this word change. And the way we uh, get round this is we think about the idea of uh, the tangent. So at this point here, the guy on the, on the slope is roughly, isn't he, going up a line that's about that steep. Whereas by the time he gets here, he'd be going up a line that's roughly that steep. So it's the idea of the tangent to the curve that's crucial in the work we're going to do. This process called differentiation. It doesn't even seem to relate to curves when you first meet the word, but, but that's what, it's, uh, what it is about. So we'll kick off with a very easy curve. So we'll kick off with um, y equals x squared. And we'll look at a point on that curve. So imagine this is our hill, this our chap's walking up, and he's at the point where x is 3, and because y is x squared, then y is 9. And I want to know how steep is that curve at that point. How will I get at that? Well, the people who came up with this method, Isaac Newton in this country, and uh, Gottfried Leibniz in Germany, more or less at the same time, um, they came up with this idea of looking at points close together. Now, we can't draw close together on, on a screen like this, so we've got to pretend that we are close to this point P. So when I get to Q, you need to imagine that these two points are actually very close together. And if you look at the numbers I've used here, x is actually only 3.1. So um, this, this whole diagram here is an exaggerated uh, version of what's going on very close to this point. So if x is 3.1, if I square 3.1, then y will be 9.61. So the gradient of the line PQ will be the difference in Y, which is 9.61 take away uh, 9. So let's write this down as we go along. So the gradient of PQ is 9.61 take away 9, divided by the difference in the X coordinates, which is 3.1 take away 3. So that's 0.61 divided by 0.1, which is 6.1. If I look at this point here, R, a bit further along, X is 3.2. If I square that, you get 10.24. So the gradient of PR will be 10.24 take away 9 over 3.2 
take away 3, which is 1.24 over 0.2, which is 6.2. What do I notice? Well, I notice then, if I start here and I go down to there, the gradient is obviously got smaller. It's gone from 6.2 to 6.1. So if I went a bit further, if I got down to here, the gradient would be less than 6.1. Now, if you were to do this with another number, there's nothing to stop you put putting in 3.05 as your x value, and you'd get a number a bit less than 6.1. As this point gets closer and closer to this point, then clearly the straight line is getting closer and closer to the yellow line, which is the tangent. This means then that if I want the slope of the yellow line, I've got to look at what happens to these numbers. And I can safely say that the, the tangent will have a gradient of 6, because if you keep doing this, you will find these numbers get nearer and nearer to 6. They never get exactly to 6 because, of course, I always need two points um, to have a line. And the whole point about this yellow line, the tangent, is it only has one point. And so there's lots of little mysteries going on here about um, points approaching something and not quite getting there. And that's what you'll learn a little bit later on, how to cope with uh, the way we write that. So I'm going to fill in my table down here. And I'm going to say that if I was brilliant and could do this so accurately, I would end up with the gradient here as 6. I could do that all over this graph at all sorts of different places. If I do it when x is 2, I come out with the answer 4. If I do it when x is 1, I come out with the answer 2. Now, 0, you could have got right yourself, because, of course, at 0, where is my tangent? It's horizontal. No gradient. So I could have put 0 in there to start with. Now, what about x is negative 1? Well, of course, when I come around this side, um, x negative 1, we haven't got the scale right, but who cares? It doesn't matter. We can see that the line goes that way. So it's negative. Now, if you really are following what's happening with this particular curve, this is a symmetrical curve, isn't it? So at negative 1, we're going to have exactly the same negative gradient as positive gradient on the other side, which was 2. So we're going to have here negative 2. Now look at those yellow numbers for a minute. Look at the x values. What do you notice? Well, it's not difficult to see, is it, what's happening here, that the gradient is always double the x value. So this is not a proof. This is a demonstration. So it looks like then that the gradient of y equals 2x, uh, let's start again, the gradient of y equals x squared is 2x, or gradient equals 2x. OK, well, we'll move on now and try this with a different graph and see what happens. OK, well, we've cleaned the board there, and I've put a, another couple of examples up, which is the, the next two in our pattern. So we've looked at x squared. Let's look at uh, y equals x cubed. I could do exactly the same. I could look at some different points along here, getting closer together, and get an idea of what the gradient was. And I would find this time, again, this one comes out as 0, 3. This is 3 as well. This becomes 12, and by the time we get to 3, the graph is very, very steep, and uh, a gradient that you'd, you certainly wouldn't be able to easily measure that on the graph. It would look as if it was going 
straight up. And then I could do the same with the x to the 4 graph. And again, this is going to be uh, naught there. This comes out as 4, and this comes out as negative 4. This comes to be a colossal 32, even steeper than that previous one. And by the time we get to this one, um, it's 108. Now, can we see any patterns going on here? Well, one or two of you may have seen this before and can and spot the pattern. So that's good if, you, if you've remembered how to see it. What can I see about those numbers? Well, they're all multiples of 3. So what happens if you divide them by 3? You get 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. Now, of course, those are much more recognisable, aren't they? They're just square numbers. So that this gradient here is the value of x squared, I divided by 3, so it's times 3. So for my y equals x cubed graph, the gradient is 3x squared. Now let's look at these numbers. Again, not an obvious pattern there, is there? But they're all multiples of 4. So let's divide by 4. Negative 1, 0, 1, nothing terribly obvious. I mean, they're pretty similar to that. But immediately I go to 8, and then 27. Then you can see what it is. They're all cube numbers. And they're cube numbers. These then are cube numbers multiplied by 4. So if y is x to the 4, the gradient is 4x to the power 3. Now, the pattern unfolds very quickly, doesn't it? x squared, we had 2x. x cubed, we have 3x squared. x to the 4, we have 4x cubed. So if I start with, let's pop this in a box so that it doesn't get confused. If we start with y equals x to the power n, then we can find that the gradient appears to be, be careful, we haven't proved it, this is only a demonstration. We appear to have found that the gradient is n times x to the n minus 1. And this will be referred to as the gradient function. So this is the gradient, let's give it its full name, the gradient function. And the process of finding the gradient function is our title, that's called differentiation. If I'm using my function notation, so if I use function x notation, or x to the n, then there is a symbol for the gradient function. It's f with a dashed. So we would say that f dashed x, the gradient function, is n x to the n minus 1. And like everything in mathematics, there's always another way of writing it. And in our next lesson, we will look at the, uh, in a sense, the original uh, notation for this process of differentiation. And we'll look at this in a little bit more detail. OK, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. 
Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.